Honestly, it's a genuine pleasure for me to uh, introduce this first reading, this first 30-minute reading. We have two writers. Um, we've got uh, Ema McBride and uh, Stella Duffy uh, to read today for you. Um, I'm going to do a short introduction to Ema, and then she will read, and then I will do a similar introduction for Stella, and then she will read. Ema McBride um, has to date published one novel, A Girl is a Half-Formed Thing. It's a novel that has its own story behind it, a 10-year story to publication. It's also a novel that in its first year and a half of publication won the Goldsmiths Prize, the Bailey's Prize for Women's Fiction, the Kerry Gold Irish Novel of the Air Award, the Desmond Elliott Prize, and the Geoffrey Faber Memorial Prize. It's a novel that, while it was a long time in gestation, has really travelled around the world and become a cultural phenomenon over the last two years. But the novel itself is what matters. What we have in Ema's work is the depiction of a voice coming to consciousness through literature, through family life, through her cultural and social upbringing to find a way of expressing herself above, beyond and through all of the restrictions that she found suffocating her. It's a stunning piece of work and Ema's going to read for that, from that book for us now. Thank you, Ema. Thank you very much. Um, I'm just going to read from the, the centre of the book. The girl is contemplating um, beginning an affair. They didn't look upon us strangely. They did not see us at all. For all about the people descended, slip in. I run up to the loo, there I puke. I should have lunch, my face in the glass. Who's that? I don't know. I do know. That's shite. But what happens now? Nothing. Don't obsess. Come on, bang the door. Hurry up, you know there's a queue. I flush and wash my hands, open. His daughter, there, standing there. She is older than me and my mouth reek of sick. Hi, hello, there, I'm sorry. Didn't feel that well. I know the feeling. Yeah, it's all the sandwiches, not enough sleep, true. I laugh, think, Jesus Christ. She goes on in. By the coffin, you're sitting, falling almost asleep, I see. I am guilty, sit by you. Say, have a lie down, I'll take your turn with the body. And you do. That gives me time, catching my breath in the cold. Hello, Granda. Now, what have you seen? The biddies are having their sup. He was a grand man, a lovely man, a terrible shame lost to the community. Still, it comes to us all in the end. True enough, but he had a good death. And what more could you want? I sat there most hours, listening to the razzle of it. Watch him duck in and out now then. Give me a nod, not a smile, not anything else. See his wife. See his wife and she sits by my... There's a cuppa. Are you tired? You look a bit pale. Nice for one moment, but I don't feel guilty. I think your husband's tongue was just in my... His daughter's. And they're sorry their grandfather's dead. I see him hug them and pat them. Now, love, don't cry, pet. Oh, daddy, daddy, they say. I don't cry, not even a morsel. Dead and gone, and why should I? The pound in my throat, not for granda. Our mother, snot quietly into her hanky, grasped my hand, for I let her. She's dreading the moment they take him away. I'm not. See uncle moving in the other room. Think, oh God, something, something's in me going on. They carried him out in the rain that night, made room on the sitting room floor for a gaggle, banged the lid on. We processed to the church. All them carry him on their backs, slide in coffin, though they'd catch it, if it, it didn't. But he was well rattled still, I'd say. I wore my black, mother mantilla, and you, your best suit, looking solemn. As we cared, we did not. Neither you, but still. I looked for him. He took his turn, one place strange for your father-in-law to be, heavy. I saw sweat roll down his face, they all did, fat bastard. Too many toffee chews are that. Dinners for the likes of him. Now, Granda, for all your sins. In the church we were good. Said prayers and settled him down for the night. Corpse. Night, Grandfather. And we all went back to his house, eat and drink. I sat with whiskey, thought, his jam's in the press. Clapped into the corner and watched him, uncle, telling jokes for the laugh of them. They like. He comes up quite popular in the ranks. His wife does not, some reason. Her smoother brown hair, I think she's a bitch. But still, he married her, that, I don't know, that's something. But me, and that's something too. I drink whiskey, keeps me going, and he gives me my fill. Have a little one. Do not, madam. Ah, he says, leave her there, and ever acquiesce she to him. 
In the morning, morning mass and the funeral, parish priest says what they ask, a good man and a sound man and very continent, carried up into the graveyard and lowered him down, throw a rose on top, his daughters, more at him than on, rub their shoulders, sons and son-in-laws, he's buried under the muck, the end, go on there, get down into your hole, amen and amen. We troop back into his kitchen and more eating more, eating him, house and home, whose is it, who knows? Who cares? Not me. But the biddies clustering. Have one of them ham sandwiches, love. So that aunt wife says, we're leaving. Early. Sorry about that. It was the only flight we could get that gets us back in time for work on Monday. Got to get back. I, well now, we must meet up again and not wait till someone dies the next time. They all neigh and say the same, but I go out. Look at him. I must go out of doors at this. Go on. You knew, I say in my own ear, what did you think would happen? Funerals over, amen and again. On the beach, on the stones, on the water splash. I'll hear it go right through me. Now see, because he's going away. I knew, sure, I knew that, but still, the ocean comes. I'll put my hands in, I'll baptise, I like again. That cold running round my knuckles. Catch it just a bit, don't you start, and don't let the ice in. Don't you dare start now, a stupid fucked up thing. Walk and walk it, go on over the rocks, put the air in your lungs, the fright out. You didn't want, took it, but, but, but. It's nothing new. Forget all that was nothing at all. You're here, he said. I thought you would be. Look, you heard my wife. I'm going and... I know you are and what do you want me to do? Why do I do that? Don't do. Shall I not then? No. He's worried this, face closing over. Look, what? Jesus, I want, I want. You want what? No. He turns and thinks it. Want what? Tell me. He says, I can't do without this, without you again. I want, have you a number? I'm over often, I want you again. I don't think, I say, I don't think, I don't know what is... I don't know what is, if this is, we should, or, you know, so many things, things, things curling up in my head. Jesus, Jesus, look, I haven't got time. Do you hear me? She's waiting. They're waiting. Daughters, yes or no, he says, yes or no. I look, flood my eyes, because this is a long, dark thing to do and cannot be undone. Will I, I say inside my mouth, can I? Do I want I? Yes, I. And I say, do you have a pen? then. Here, take it down, because I have no idea what is right. And I know that he smiles, that he stands with his back to the house, and I look at him and he strokes my face and he strokes my hair and he touches my breast and he says, that's my girl, I'll see you soon. And back then he to his own. I am as sick as I can be in the car back home. I am as full of all sorts of things as I am, was. Know that in the bone and race of me I am wrong, different from you. Where is that from? Don't know. Still so, nonetheless, I watch. She sniffing at the wheel and you, your walkman in your ears. She'd be buzzing all the way back home. She says, come on, children now. Let's offer up a few prayers for the holy souls. Hail, holy queen, mother of mercy. Hail our life, our sweetness and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Fantastic. Uh, thank you so much, Ema. And for those of you who... Um, want to read the book, obviously you can buy it, but Ema has also recorded an audiobook version so you can hear her read her own text, which is an experience all of its own. Our second reader today is um, Stella Duffy. She is a writer of novels, short stories, plays, films, radio dramas, screen treatments. I think polymath, multitasker, is also <laughs> often sort of attached to your name. Uh, she's also a social campaigner, a social activist, a founder of the outstanding Fun Palaces project, which you'll hear about later in the week. But she's here, first and foremost, as a writer. 
she'll be reading from Everything is Moving, Everything is Joined, published by Salt Publishing, also based in this region. And she is an arch manipulator of the human voice, as you will now find out, Stella. Thank you. Um, this is a, a story that was commissioned by the BBC. And there's a, a lovely thing about being commissioned to write short stories for the BBC ones, they, they sort of give you a little bit of a, do it a bit like this, 13 and a half minutes long, a couple of other restrictions, and there's something about a couple of restrictions that I find immensely freeing. Take that as you will. <laughs> it's a slow one. <laughs> it's called From the River's Mouth, and uh, it, it's set in London, it's set in the Thames. Sorry, love, don't do south. No, darling, can't go south the river this time of night. South over there, you need a passport, don't you? South, no, not me, I don't go south, can't go south, won't go south. <laughs> enough. I have heard enough. I have had enough. There is time and there is tide and there is the Thames. Here is the Thames. Old Father Thames, they used to say, because they didn't know any better, don't know any better. I am no more father than I am mother. But I do have my children, my tributary babies, running into me, clinging to me, come deep down far to me, my Ephra and my Peck and my fast fecund fleet. I have grown tired of these people who are frightened of water, worried by the South. I am irritated by their jibes, their dismissals, their lack of courage in the face of bridges, their tube tunnel terror. Irritation might form a pearl in an oyster shell, but not for me. I twist and I have turned for your pleasure, writhing through your dogged aisles, and yet you cannot bear to cross me? Too scared to cross me? Don't cross me then. Don't you dare cross me. I have had enough. I am very, very cross indeed. I am so old and yet twice a day am remade, brand new, flowing through. I have been burned and iced, open and closed, fresh and fetid. You care, I don't. I am not interested in how many species live in me, what is the sand and silt content of my shore, where you would place another rail bridge, road tunnel, ferry landing. I am not interested in land. I am what lies beneath. And I hear the lies you tell one another, your tube delays and trains cancelled and walking in the rain excuses. You're getting lost in the south, tossed in the south, all your reasons for not getting there, for being late, for being last. I will not hear excuses anymore. I love my north and my south sides equally. Would you ask me to care more for one than the other? Love half of me more than the other, and yet you do. You do. Elizabeth flowed from Westminster to Greenwich in my soft arms. Churchill rode me dead in a barge and all the cranes of the city bowed down when he passed. When I was young, they carved a version of my face and set me fast on the Cutty Sark's prow. It was like me, but it was not me. I did not allow graven images. Cleopatra loaned me a needle once. I was darning something, a sock, a city, I forget which now. I kept her needle. She didn't much care for sewing anyway, never one for handicrafts, that girl, more make, do and mend. I have been a silver ribbon misleading bombers from Tilbury to Teddington. I have welcomed the Boudicca's flowing blood. I have sat cold and uninterested while the city burned several times at my sides. I have been so much, I am so much, and you can't be bothered to cross. <laughs> Fine then. I am tired of arguing. You have turned me down once too often. Enough is enough. Come down here, found here, twist and coiled round here. Here I am, silted and salty and waiting, waiting. The Greenwich Foot Tunnel was opened in 1902. It is 50 feet deep, 1,217 foot long, and it never closes. It runs through me and I through it. Now, quickly, while the lift doors are closed, the camera turned away, reach in and under and stretch your fingers just that little bit further. That switch there, click it, click it. <gasps> Here we are, our entrance hall. A polished shell path cleared for you. Come in, it's all right. I'm with you now. You do not need to leave a trail of pebbles or crusts. I will bring you back, I promise. I'm good like that, I always return. Welcome. 
These many man-made bridges, they run over me, the world-renowned tube passes through, but this tunnel, this one tunnel passes passing through. My guests do not pass through. Would you like to meet them? Oh, they'd love to meet you. They see so many faces down here, but very few who really know who come and go. This is Charlie. He's been here since 1913. Hush now, dear. Don't cry for the people. It's not nice to make so much noise. Hush, hush. I said shut up. Good boy. Charlie was perfectly happy to see young Mary from Bermondsey as long as Mary made all the running. Mary walked under the river to the aisle for her tea, a strong cupper and a nice currant bun, a kiss and a peck for afters. She caught a ferry to meet him and then walked up to Victoria Park by the bandstand in the dark where no one would see his kisses stolen from her lips. Poor, tired Mary stood an hour on the tram all the way to Hampstead for the fair, her one afternoon off, and again she journeyed to the far north for him. Once, just once, Mary said, couldn't Charlie come to her? Couldn't he bend a little, bend over the water? And, and then he laughed right in her face, laughed and shook his head and belched a vulgar grin. His voice raised just that much too loud, his mouth open a little bit too far, and his words caught on a wind that bore them to me. Cross the river? No, not me, no fear, you won't catch me crossing there. <laughs> oh, but I did, didn't I, sweetheart? Catch you, caught you, kept you, keep you. Mary cried once or twice, wondered where he'd gone, her daring beau, her darling boy. Then she moved on. Charlie did not move on. Charlie stayed down here with me, forever 19 and going nowhere, never again. His brothers looked up and down the shore for his body, night following night for seven weeks. It never turned up because Charlie did not drown. My guests do not drown. They're cool and dry and going nowhere ever again. Still, could have been worse. Could have gone with his brothers to the Somme. This is Emma. Say hello, Poppet, Emma. Say nice. Be nice, good girl. That's right. Emma used to work in the city, didn't you, my lovely? Smart job, smart house, smart girl, not so smart girl. All they wanted, her friends, was a quick hen night trip to Clapham. How bad could it be? But oh no, not our Emma. She laughed, laughed in the bride-to-be's face. Giggled behind the back of the long-suffering bridesmaid, said she'd do her best, see what she could arrange, give it a try, try my eye. Still, I was patient. I am happy to wait. I have all my life to flow downstream. And now, I have all of Emma's life. My little queen of the slip tide, how did I catch her if she didn't cross? Good question. Well done. You see how I bend, how I twist. You can barely tell which side I'm on down there by Canary Wharf. Emma left her city friends drinking by the water, drinking no water, and went for a wander. Well, I spin into the docks too, you know, all those glass-fronted places reflecting my glory, refracting my shattered light. A wind leapt from the water, splashed single drops onto each of her 500 pound shoes. Emma bent down to check the leather, and then I was there, and now she, she is here. Martin travelled all the way from South Africa to London, such a distance he came. But when he got here, the river was one step too much for him. He would only live north, work east, play west, so very impolite. I will not be crossed. Martin's ticket remains unused, and he only remembers the sun. Sam journeyed south from Hexham. Stoke Newington became his new northeast, and I, the Thames barrier, he could not face. Now Sam is my angel of the north, and try as he might, he cannot stretch his arms wide enough to reach the shore. Kane from New Zealand, feared walking across Hungerford Bridge, mocked what he called my dirty waters. He needed a closer look to prove London pollution, Antipodean superiority. He got his closer look, and now Kane knows all the water all too well. The taste and texture is all he knows. He has become expert in the ways of silt and silence, sand blocking his size. There they all are, so many, so much, so missed. So mine. Anyway, thank you, thank you. You should go now, really, you should go. The tide is turning, London's burning, and you don't want to be down here when it does. Seriously, I mean it, go now. This way, back here, through here, that's right, past the cool white tiles. Bye-bye, my little ones. I'll be back later, always be back later. Hush now, hush. Come on, keep up. Don't you want to go back up to the day and the bright riverside light? Didn't you have an appointment at the elephant, was it? Putney? You did mean to cross, didn't you? Yes, well, off you go then. <laughs>